Hello, everyone. Hi. Welcome back to Adobe Live on this beautiful Taco Tuesday, which is what I heard that you've dubbed today, chat. Hope you're all doing well. I'm Kathleen, and this is Stephanie Brockler. Hi. Hey. We'll let Stephanie introduce herself in a moment. She's very talented, very skilled. But first, let's talk about what we're going to be doing today and this week. This week is all about editorial design, so page layout, zines, recipe cards, which is what you're going to be working on today. You're going to be doing a zine, right? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> we'll talk about that more in a second. But chat, if you are new here, uh, let's check out the schedule, the kind of uh, events that are going to be going on. We had Rachel already hosted by Javier. We got Stephanie and Lucas coming up at the end of the day, hosted by Michael. So all awesome designers, uh, very cool. And this is going to be going on until Thursday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, lots of editorial design goodness. We've got Dana in the chat. What's up, Dana? Ryan, Liani, hello, hello. Showtime, says Christina. Awesome. <laughs> So, and we're also going to be doing a couple other exciting things during the streams. We're going to be doing a chat and win in about 30 minutes. So that will be a little chance for you to get active in the chat. And we're also going to be doing the daily challenge, which we do every day, except for portfolio reviews, which will be on the third day. So like you can see behind us, we've got the create a summer recipe book or card. Uh, if you go to behance.net slash live, which is where you're hopefully watching us from, if you click on the challenge tab that's in the chat pod right at the top, you can learn about the rules for the challenge today. Basically, we want you to use InDesign to create and share a one page or more summer themed recipe card. We have a template for you. You can see I'm reading from right here. We have a template for you to use. We also have a stock gallery for you to grab an image from. So if you don't know what stock is, it's an awesome way to get images for your projects. And you don't have to buy these. All you have to do is click on one of the images that you like and save a preview to your computer. It'll just download. You can pop that into InDesign and you're good to go. Oh, Renata says that they're from Brazil. Oh, nice. <laughs> Olivier is from Canada. Hello, hello. So cool. <laughs> Mel says, my InDesign class says, hi, what's up, class? <laughs> Thanks for joining us. You've got Stephanie as an amazing teacher today. <laughs> uh, and like I said, we're also going to be doing a chat and win. In about 30 minutes, we're going to be giving away an awesome InDesign pin. It says, oh, crop. It's very cool. Uh, so that's your chance to sign in, get active, and we'll be picking one of you randomly to win this pin. Anna won previously, so hopefully uh, one of you will win in about 30 minutes. And then we're going to be picking a winner of the challenge in about an hour and a half. So at 12.35, get those recipe cards in, and Stephanie will pick a winner. <laughs> You're like, hey, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes. I like how this is going already. <laughs> cool, so I've talked enough. Uh, Stephanie, maybe you can introduce yourself so people knew who you are. Yeah, um, I'm Stephanie. I'm a graphic designer. Um, I work primarily in branding and also editorial design, a bit um, packaging and also a lot of web design. Mm -hmm. um, I'm living and working in New York. Um, at I'm working at a studio called NR2154. What's that stand for? Um, it's a number. Ah, so okay. um, the philosophy behind that was that the project is like it's a project number mm -hmm. and the projects always stand first yeah and NR is short for number in Danish yeah um, the founders are both Danish and um, that's where it originated gotcha cool <laughs> so you're working there as a designer? designer yeah cool very nice and you've been working in New York for a couple years now yeah about three and a half years I moved there from Austria mm -hmm. where I um, lived uh, previously and then where I'm from Right. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So welcome to San Francisco. Thank you. <laughs> First time. Lots of touristy things to get done. And you can see by Stephanie's portfolio that she is very skilled. Lots of cool projects. If you want to find her on Behance, it's just behance.net slash Stephanie Bruckler. That's B-R-U-E-C-K-L-E-R. -E -E or click the info tab in the chat pod. You can just click on her little face. It'll take you right there. Cool. And then what are you going to be working on for the next Three days. Um, for the next three days, I'm going to work on a zine, um, yes. about 16 pages. Mm -hmm. I, th I thought maybe tabloid size, and I'm gonna um, probably print it afterwards in like newsprint, like really crappy Ooh, paper. Oh, like it. Um, the theme or the name I was thinking about is dead plants. 
So um, it's inspired by the transformation of like dying or wilting plants and flowers mm. and um, how that actually creates a different sort of beauty. Yeah. Um, so this scene is going to ze celebrate the beauty in the ugly. Cool. Wow. Um, so what I was thinking of doing is um, for, I'm going to use InDesign, Illustrator and Photoshop as my primary tools mm. um, for day one today I was thinking of like setting up the InDesign layout, um, choosing a color palette and maybe creating like some sort of logo for the co cover mm -hmm. and then the next couple days we'll just like laying out the spreads and uh, defining headlines, um, coloring the illustrations and layouting everything. Cool, that's awesome. I was We were talking earlier and I'm so excited that you're going to be using Illustrator, InDesign and Photoshop just like kind of making them do your bidding, working with all of them. Yeah, it's usually like a lot of like switching around in the program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which they're very good at. So I'm excited <laughs> to see you do this. Uh, Yuri says, Stephanie, beautiful page. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, agreed. So you have your Behance. You can also just go to her website, which you told me earlier that you designed yourself. Yeah, and also coded myself. She's a unicorn, everyone. <laughs> so talented. You're saying that you're in your schooling, and we can talk about this later, but you learned pretty much everything mm. from filmmaking to developing to... Exhibition design, packaging, design yeah. branding, basically everything. They're just getting you ready for whatever you would need to do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks, Tim, for posting that link in the chat. Appreciate it. So we'll jump into the project, and then in about 25 minutes, we'll do the chat and win. It'll be a nice little break. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Margarita says really cool work. Agreed. Can I go to your computer? Sure. Okay. The magic um, begins. Just a quick summary of a structure I was thinking of. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm going to work um, with primarily today is um, the cover, which is um, some, I have some plant illustrations that I do every now and then, just mm -hmm. like very quick drawings of wilting flowers um, or plants. And that is going to be featured on the cover in the first two spreads. And then I'm going to also work on the um, layout and the um, logo of it. Mm -hmm. And um, so we could jump into InDesign and just start setting up the file. Yay! I, as someone who is not very comfortable in InDesign. I'm excited to see how you start just totally from start to finish. So go in, um, since I want to print this later on, go into print, select tabloid size, facing pages. Mm -hmm. um, size looks fine to me. Um, all the grid settings I'm gonna do afterwards. Gotcha. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a master um, and create my grid in here. Okay. I'm probably um, not going to use this grid very much um, since it's going to be more playful, yeah. but I was thinking there's um, one very specific slide that I was thinking about um, where I'm going to have a story that I'm laying out and there I'm going to need a very strict grid. So for a newsprint, you usually have like a margin on the outside right. where you can't print. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be, I think, 15 millimeter on the top and bottom. Then on the inside I have two and a half, which is very tiny. And then on the outside I have 20 millimeters. Nice. There's a, a <laughs> kind of a argument going on in the chat right now on people who like the light you are that yeah. you have. <laughs> People are like, come to the dark side. Oh, yeah. You have to. No, no, I, I prefer the light one. It's like the more old school version. True. And the dark one I have for Illustrator and Photoshop, especially for Photoshop, because I feel like I'm doing like something like In hacker. A dark room. I don't know. <laughs> You're a hacker. <laughs> yeah, that's what Photoshop is for. Photoshopping, yeah. <laughs> no, when you opened this, I was like, oh no, is this like InDesign like yeah. five? <laughs> but no, it's the newest one. <laughs> So I'm going to um, set up six columns per page. Um, I kind of like um, having a 12 grid, a 12 column grid mm -hmm. um, for a spread so I can um, work with like um, three um, columns at a time or four. It's like a nice number. That's true. Cool. Um, oh, and then I wanted to set up some um, guides as well. 
And I'm sure people who aren't super comfortable in InDesign might be wondering what the point of the master spread or pages are. Yeah, so um, when I set up a grid or any type of layout on the master slide, I can actually use it, like it's going to sh show up on all of my pages. So if I just add a new page, it's going to always have this grid. Right. Um, I might actually set up a different master slide for the um, cover and the back cover. Right. So I'm going to create a um, new master slide, it's the B master. Um, I'm going to delete these um, guides. And I'm going to change this to have 15 millimeters on every side. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think that I'll need any columns for this. So what I can do is I can work with different master slides and define, if I right click here, um, apply master to pages, I can just like choose a different master for the cover. It's so easy. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I actually thought that you could only have one master because that's no. what the name kind of makes you think like this is the master, but you mm. can have multiple. It's it's very practical, especially if we work on longer books that have, um, for example, a cover, like a, let's say, chapter intro. Mm -hmm. um, then you might have like pages that have just text and then some pages that have images. So you could have like different grids or you could also already have like um, page numbers and um, headlines set up. Yeah and then just like alternate. Perfect. Um, awesome. So I'm going to just add 16 pages that I boom, need. Boom, boom, boom. And why 16 pages? Um, because since I'm going to print this on um, newsprint, mm -hmm. it needs to be divisible by four. Mm -hmm. um, so I have like two pages on the front side of the paper and two pages on the back side of the gotcha. paper. Gotcha. Perfect. In chat, let us know if you are a pro editorial designer, if this is your first time looking at InDesign. Like, where, where do you stand? What's your skill level? Let us know. <laughs> um, so I was thinking um, I already have uh, some sort of color mood board um, prepared for this. So I was thinking of um, working with a very fresh and fun color mm -hmm. palette. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to um, drag in my mood board and pick the colors from there Nice. and add them to my um, color swatches up there. This center piece of inspiration, um, La one of our previous guests, Lau, used to design oh, really? some branding <laughs> for a plant shop. Yeah. Yeah, it's really pretty. I love it. So Matisse-esque. Yeah, I'm just gonna add all these colors real quick so I have them accessible in here. Mm -hmm. Get them in that swatch panel. Yeah. So Babiel says that he is a beginner. <clears throat> Elijah is a pro. Michael says pro. I use in or in design all the time. I almost said Instagram. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> in design. <laughs> Liani is advanced, so there seems like there's a lot of advanced people in chat. So if there are questions in chat, feel free to answer them for each other. That's the beautiful thing about this community. Although I know Tim is in chat, and he's <laughs> awesome at answering questions. So is Gus. Um, so I was thinking of um, just starting on the cover right now. So I'm going to... Um, what I was thinking of doing is that every spread has its own color. Um, mm. For the beginning spread, I was thinking of just using the same because because it's newsprint, it might actually bleed through. Like you might be able to see the color on yeah. the other side. Mm -hmm. And since I don't really want it to like mix with maybe, let's say a light blue or something, Great. I'm just gonna do that for the first one okay. so that the cover looks kind of nice. Yeah, right. Um, then next, I'm just going to save this first. Smart. <laughs> if you are working on your recipe cards, make sure they are saved. Yeah. Don't save it till the end, please. No. Had that too many times in my life where a program crashed on me. <laughs> Though I think one of the scariest moments is when you're done and you look mm. up and it's still like Untitled 1 and I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I saved it. 
<laughs> I'm a daredevil on accident. Yeah, for me it's like a reflex. I just like mm -hmm. hit Command S like every five minutes. That's or so. good. Really good. Um, yeah. So um, for the logo of the cover, or actually, I'm gonna um, show you illustrations that I have yes. that I'm gonna play with. Exciting. It's um super simple um, oh, cool. drawings. Mm -hmm. um, has this like texture to it. So I already cover, uh, colored wow. some of them white, um, yeah. which are gonna stay white, and then I have some that I'm probably going to color differently later on. Cool, did you do these in Photoshop? Um, so I usually, what I do with like all of my work is I start hand drawn, mm -hmm. and then I digitize it, and then um, edit it from there in Photoshop. Gotcha. Cool, I love hearing that. I feel like a lot of people start digitally these days, but I feel like I can't. I can't get my like emotions in it unless I do it on paper first yeah. and then put it in there. Yeah, I kind of like that because it gives you less space to, um, like it gives you more space to mess around with. It mm -hmm. doesn't need to be perfect. I feel like if you do it on the computer, you can erase it any time, yeah. like go steps back. Mm -hmm. But in real life, that's not the case. Like yeah. you would need to start over and I kind of like that. I love that. Love it a lot. Um, so I am. Um, I was thinking of using this illustration for the cover. Ooh, that white on that kind of scarlet or carnation red or orange. Orange, orange. red, yeah. kind of something in between. Like yeah. a tomato. Yes. Um, so what I was thinking, I actually did some sketches of like how I can um, lay out the type. Ooh, maybe we can um, show this with the GoPro. We can. Hello. So oftentimes what I do when I start thinking about a logo is just like sketch Sorry. it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> sketch it out real quick. Um, what I want the layout to be, like either just like written horizontally. Stance. He's gonna help us. Oh, thank you. Oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Of course. Um, either horizontally <laughs> or like vertically, mm -hmm. like slanted. Um, I kind of felt like that this felt nice yeah. um, from a layout perspective. Also looking at the illustration that I'm going to work with. Um, but I'm gonna start out like laying out a couple of these in mm -hmm. Illustrator and then probably gonna stick with this one. Cool, I like how you actually do that by hand first too. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Anna, that's Paco. I guess. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go into Illustrator. Um, so the dark UI, like you said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I already have um, a typeface in mind that I'm gonna start off of. Um, usually when I create a branding um, for like a logo for like some sort of brand, I would mm -hmm. probably start with a typography mood board, just like to get a feel like what I want to do and then either create something from scratch or if I find something that is already similar as a typeface, mm -hmm. start from there. Gotcha. So what we're going to do today is just like going to start um, here. So when you say a mood board, is that like layouts that you like or typefaces or kind of both? Um, it depends on um, what kind of project it is. Mm -hmm. Like if it's a um, magazine, I would probably start with also just typefaces, like different layouts. It could be any posters, like anything that's typographic that I mm -hmm. find that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Could um, be colors, it could be also nice layouts of other books that I like. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, it varies. Sometimes it's also packaging or like websites that I like where I'm like, oh, the use of typography is really nice yeah. there. There's something there. Very cool. What's up, Anita? Thanks for being here. And if you haven't said hello yet in chat, feel free to log in. If you're watching on Behance, go, go ahead and log in to Behance, say hello. That's how you will be also entered to win our chat and win in about 10 minutes. You can see the little countdown <laughs> over there. Uh, so 10 minutes, make sure you're logged in, but feel free to say hi now. We'd love to greet you. And let us know if you are a plant killer or a plant lover, because I'm both. I love plants, but they always die. 
What's up, Lauren? Andrea, hello from Los Angeles. Hello from San Francisco. Hello, Ryan and Damon. <laughs> Babiel is a plant lover. Nice. So is Donovan. Margarita's both. Same. Deborah says I try not to kill plants, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes it just happens. Sometimes they look fine one day and the next day. Yeah. They're, they're beyond help. I have like about 30 plant babies at home. What? And <laughs> Sometimes it just happens. You can't do anything against that. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you have 30. It's like, yeah, give well, yourself some slack. It's also like, depending on the season, it's so mm. different. Like the heat in the winter is like killing most plants. It's like yeah. not natural for them mm -hmm. to be in like such a hot environment. But then in summer, it's kind of nice because it's in my apartment, for example, it's really humid mm. and I have a lot of tropical plants and palms. They love so it. Just, like, <laughs> They're like, it's thanks, crazy. mom. Yeah. And you're like sweating. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kelsey, plant lover, but they always die on me. Me too. I'm still learning. I'm still a young mother. <laughs> Archie says, hello from Liberia. What's up, Archie? Carson says, hello from Malaysia. What's up? And uh, Katrin from Austria. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi Katrin. <laughs> Fellow Austrian in the house. Yay. Ooh, ooh. Okay, so I'm just playing with like um, the letters, how, how I'm aligning them, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit also, just like grinning it a bit to see how that works. Um, I'm gonna try some more uh, options here. And where did you come up with that kind of stacked pyramid and then the inverted pyramid? Um, I was just like thinking of like um, how, like what kind of interesting shape I could create mm -hmm. on the cover. I, I was thinking that this kind of thing is a bit boring, just yeah. like having the type straight. Right, it's expected. Um, yeah, so I was just thinking of like how I could that I think it's almost like a it's like a reflection yeah which is interesting because it's dead plants so like the living plants then reflected yeah. dead plants just how you have it here yeah there's something a little bit subversive and maybe spooky or I don't know it's yeah. cool <laughs> you're like I don't know <laughs> hey Mock um, from India it's like stranger things I guess is what I'm <laughs> trying to say. <laughs> yeah, it's like the, what's it called? Like the upside, the upside down. down. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. where all the dead plants go. <laughs> Sophia says, love the process. You are amazing. Oh, thank you. Agreed. Mm, maybe I'll just outline the type first and then rearrange it. Um, getting a bit crowded in that artboard. <laughs> Nothing like making a new artboard. Yeah. So you're outlining the text and that makes each different letter like its own um, shape. Shape, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking of um, just like putting this like um, in a diagonal. Mm -hmm. And then having the plants maybe. Stack a bit. Ooh. Um, I don't need the A. Oh, that's cool. Little X marks the spot. Yeah. That's actually, I like that. Yeah. Kind of travels across the page in an interesting way. I, um, yeah, um, Go and outline this one next. Mm -hmm. um, what I like when I overlap letters like this is that it creates some busy areas. But what I'm gonna do is like clean them, clean them up a bit, and removing mm. some parts of the letters. Mm -hmm. um, so here, either I think the part of the A I'm gonna delete out. 
So you're just deleting the anger points that yeah. make it up? Cool. There's so many different ways that you could clean it up. You could use Pathfinder, Shape Builder, oh, yeah. just deleting points like you are. I think yours is maybe the most like finessed way to do it. It's yeah, very I feel specific. like I'm gonna um, later paste this in, like just copy paste it into InDesign. Mm -hmm. And for that, I feel like it's easier if you don't have a clipping mask because mm -hmm. sometimes it might create some weird things um, that were not expected. Right. So, um, let's see, I might move the T a little bit over so the points yeah, perfectly line up. Yeah. Feels good to the eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then let's see what else. So this, this area is still bugging me a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, wondering if I should delete that part of the N or the part of the T. Um, Ooh. Maybe the T, then the L continues on the end stays. Yeah. Good thing about Illustrator is you can just Command Z. Yep. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I would do without that. <laughs> Thanks, Adobe. <laughs> Christina wants to know: Have you ever made your own fonts before? Typefaces. Um, not complete um, typefaces. No, mm -hmm. just um, custom um, letter shapes basically for um, logos. Like I, I never actually took that or like actually made a whole letter set. Yeah. It's just like, let's say if that plant um, was custom made, then that was. That's what, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just the P and the L and the A, Yes, et exactly. Nice. Lukas says, hello from Poland. Hello. <laughs> What's up, Lukas? Thanks for being here. <laughs> Appreciate it. And like I said, there's a lot of self-proclaimed professionals or advanced InDesign users in the chat. I'm sure there's some professional or uh, advanced Illustrator users in the chat, so if you have questions, feel free to ask them, and we'll try to answer them, or maybe a chat member can answer. Such a helpful, helpful community. We've got about two and a half minutes until we're gonna do our chat and when, so it's the perfect time to get logged in on Behance. If you're watching on YouTube, come on over to Behance if you want to participate and we'll talk more about that in about two minutes and 20 seconds. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing, so accurate. <laughs> um, so because these are almost touching, I probably am going to actually um, extend this over here. Mm -hmm. um, just like little details. Super little details. I love it though, you are really precise, almost like surgical. It's this. bugging me if I don't do that. <laughs> You're like eyes twitching. Yeah. <laughs> I think this okay. is a skill that's really important though, because a lot of people, they would want to use Pathfinder or Shape Builder or something that's a little easier. And if they can't do it easily, they might not do yeah. it at all. I feel like I just coming from um, a place where I'm like actually designing quite a lot of logos also for really big companies, mm -hmm. um, but also very small companies. I just feel like it's really important to pay attention to every single um, anchor point you have here mm -hmm. because like, I don't know, somebody else might use your logo in the future and apply it like some other designer and be like, who did this? Right. Like, why Why is why are things not aligning? Like, why is this actually not straight? And things like that. Yeah. So I feel like it, it needs to be precise. You'd never want that. Yeah. <clears throat> Anissa wants to know, have you ever used the Adobe mobile apps to do any of your work? No, not yet. <laughs> I think especially just for your little sketching mm -hmm. stage, Photoshop sketch would be Oh yeah, that would awesome. be. Awesome. I only used like um, one of those Photoshop um, apps on my phone to retouch some photos, mm. um, but it was very heavy on my phone. I yeah. feel like because um, like I was using it on my old phone, yeah, and it was running on an OS it shouldn't have run on. Right, so. <laughs> just chugging along. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, capture would be good as well. You can like uh, take a picture of a typeface in the wild, and it will help you discover what it's named and you can download it and such. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see if there's anything else I see. I really love if you go up that little area, oh, yeah. the top of the A yeah. and the D. Like where it like, interlocks mm -hmm. nicely. Perfect. 
And then here, this is like almost touching, so I might just extend it a little bit. Oh, nice. Um, perfect. Ooh, we've got some fireworks happening behind oh, nice. us. <laughs> My dog was here. He would be hiding. <laughs> these fireworks. So everyone, these fireworks mean we are about to jump into our chat and win. If you have not participated in the past, make sure you are logged in on Behance. You can use your Adobe ID, you can use your Gmail, Facebook, etc. Log in, we're gonna play a small video and then you'll have a minute to chat. Here we go. So you have one minute. What's up, Nicole? Heard you were Stephanie's Hi. friend. Hey, <laughs> Nicole, thanks for being here. You have one minute to say something in the chat. Maybe we can ask them something design related. Like, their, what's your favorite typeface or something like that? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, favorite typefaces. <laughs> Let us know you have about a minute left and you could win the awesome O Crop InDesign pin that we will be sending you for free. Just to say thanks. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being active. Look at that chat go. Oh, it's going crazy. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> I can't even read any of them. Okay, I saw Baskerville. I saw Proxima Nova and yeah. Garamond. Lee Gothic, uh, the new Bauhaus fonts. Those are cool. <laughs> Someone says, yeah, there you go. Someone <laughs> said Comic Sans. Okay. <laughs> Lots of Baskerville, I see. Hmm. Gotham, Century Gothic, Gotham 2. Dido, Futura, <laughs> very nice. So yeah. we will keep getting these submissions in slowly but surely, actually very quickly. And we have a winner. Would you like to read the name? Do you see it? Oh, Kylin Ritchie? Kylin, <laughs> you are the winner. Congratulations. Woo! Yay. <laughs> you have won the awesome O oh, Crop InDesign pin. Uh, make sure you keep an eye out on your Behance messages because Adobe Live will be messaging you to get your information so we can send that over to you. Yay! She oh, says, yeah. what? <laughs> Congrats, Kylan! <laughs> and if you did not win the chat and win, uh, make sure to come back for the next stream. We have one more today, and then we will be back for the rest of the week until Thursday. So that will be awesome. So you could also win that. And we have about an hour until the challenge submission deadline. So just to remind you, if you're totally new, we love to do different challenges every day having to do with what our designers are working on. So we are challenging you to do your own editorial design. If you go to the chat pod and click on the challenge tab, you'll see that we're inviting you to use InDesign to make a recipe card. We have a template for you. We're gonna help you out with that. You also. Uh, can use or should use the stock gallery to put an image in there. You don't have to buy the stock images. You can just download a preview. There's information on all of that there. And you have 56 minutes and 34 seconds to get those submitted. All right, back to Dead Plant <laughs> Society. Yeah, um, so I don't know. I, I feel like I'm kind of torn if I should like continue exploring some others or start with this. Mm. Um, I might maybe try one more. Cool. Do your really due like diligence. This one, right? <laughs> I do like that one. Okay, maybe I'll just start with this. Let's see. Um, thinking of like if I also do the same thing where I kind of interlock them a little bit more. I love that. Wow. And then here I could just like remove, like work a bit on the E and the mm -hmm. A. And make it a bit more interesting. Whoa. And Carson says all of the negative space looks really good. <laughs> I agree. It is cluttered and busy, but I love that interlocking nature of it. Mm. And are you just kind of eyeballing? Yeah. I'm wow. just like looking at it and thinking of like, ah, it's a bit cramped, but if I remove some things, it might not be that bad. Mm -hmm. um, oh. Yeah, so let's just see how it looks in general. Um, you know, maybe this feels a bit cramped. That's a bit better. Um, so I'll go in and um, 
just change some things on the E. Just like have it really quick and dirty. Mm -hmm. um, change some anchor points here. This is so cool. I don't know why. It's almost like satisfying to watch <laughs> these little anchor points just like morph to where they should be. Yeah. Chat, what kind of designer are you? Are you the Stephanie? Where you see something tiny and you're like, that needs to be fixed right now. Or are you me, who would be too lazy to do this? <laughs> Let us know. <laughs> Maybe not lazy. Maybe, mm, yeah, it's actually. Maybe more efficient. Maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure. Efficient with my time and being lazy with it. Being lazy isn't always bad. No. Mm. It's true. I learned how to do projects very quickly in school because I didn't want to take that much time doing them. It's being time efficient, I think. Anna says, this looks so much better. Nice. Michael says, I'm quite into the little details. That's good. <laughs> good designer, Michael. Good designer. Ooh. So smooth. Elle says, it has to be fixed, always. Must be perfect. I feel like it really depends on what it is. Like if you're just doing something that's going to be really tiny in the end and like nobody really sees it. Yeah. Like, I don't know, then it might not matter that much. But if you're printing something and it's like a huge billboard. Oh yeah. A tiny, tiny, tiny pixel off. It's gonna like, be like yeah. that big in real life. <laughs> yeah, but Anna has a good point. It all depends on what you're working on, just like yeah. you said, Stephanie. If you're doing, if what you're doing requires modern edges, yes. But if it's something you're doing that is stylistically sketchy, no. There you go. Annika says I'm a detail freak. Kelsey says I'm an OCD designer. OCD designer. <laughs> Christina says depends on how much time I have to do it. That's true. If you don't have that much time, you kind of just have to get it out there. <laughs> um. hmm. Little details. Yeah, I feel like a little bit that the D looks a bit off because it's like so f far out mm -hmm. to yeah. the N, but it's gonna give me like a weird, a little bit of a weird um, hmm. connection there. I don't mind it that much. Yeah, I feel it's like it's nice. nicer if it's actually nicely aligned mm -hmm. to the top. It gives your eye a little yeah. like nook to tuck into. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know, which which of these two should we place in there? Don't ask me, <laughs> which one I like. Maybe chat has an opinion. Oh yeah, maybe the chat has an opinion. This is um, what you're here for, chat. You can do like number one and number two. All right, if you like number one, go ahead and type number one. If you like number two, go ahead and type number two. And if you type anything else, I will come over there <laughs> and I will take away your Adobe ID. <laughs> There's a lot of ones there. Wow. <laughs> I don't see anything besides ones. Yeah, crazy. Okay, it's gonna be one then. Okay. <laughs> Nicole's cool. saying one too. <laughs> easy peasy. Lucas says two. Yes. You know, I like one as well. Okay. Sounds good. I'm gonna place that one in there. Yay! Thank good you. Job, Chad. Thank you. <laughs> now Kerwin? there's some twos. There's an yeah. eight. <laughs> right, as soon as I called it out. <laughs> Kerwin said eight. Sorry, Kerwin, I'm taking away your behance privileges. You have to go in the corner for five minutes. <laughs> um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste them in as two separate groups. Um, nice. I'm thinking of maybe adding some text in between the two. Oh. So I'm gonna actually lock the background. Um, Whoa. I'm not gonna size those up. 
Yes, it works really well with the shape of the flower, yeah. I think. Um, see, this is centered on the page. For the cover, um, I was also thinking of just adding the issue number on this. Um, so I'm gonna do that right in the center between the two. I'm just playing around with scale right now a little bit to see um, where these lines kind of overlap. Because yeah. I'm, what I'm going to do um, in a few minutes is I'm actually going to try to have some lines over going oh, over the yeah. top and some behind mm -hmm. it. So, right. just trying to see where it would create actually nice um, overlaps. I see a lot of spaces right now where it butts directly up against it, mm. which might be a good thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm just like worried about this one behind the D, but maybe it's fine. Yeah. Like if I just leave it in the back, it might not be mm -hmm. that bad. This looks kind of nice. I think this might work, maybe moving it a little down. It's not gonna be, or actually I could just move the illustration. It's like, well, the type should actually be centered. Uh -huh. So <laughs> let's move the illustration up a little bit. So it's like right behind that S. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah, so it's a bit hidden. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add um, the issue number. So I'm just gonna say like issue or just like number one or something. Cool. Um, some of you in the chat said you guys liked Futura. It's also one of my favorites. Yeah, you were excited when you saw that. Yeah. Um, um, maybe, let's see. I have um, Futura loaded in from Typekit. Um, Boom, Typekit. Yay. <laughs> Maybe let's do bold. Oh, I like that, the sans serif with the serif. Yeah. Um, do you prefer to work with a mouse? I'm like, usually when I'm on my laptop, um, when I work on my laptop, I'm just like working on my sofa or somewhere. Ah. So I don't, I don't need the mouse, but. Yeah. Um, I'm used to working with a mouse just because at, at the office I usually just like have the big iMac mm -hmm. and I have the mouse um, so it's kind of I feel like I'm faster than with the trackpad it right. used to be the other way around but oh. no yeah I, I feel like when you have your mouse and your hand on the keyboard it's almost like you're flying a spaceship <laughs> <laughs> have total control yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Cool. Um, and now I'm gonna um, take the illustration, place it on top. Um, so now I can see like where where it kind of we overlaps. We were both like. <laughs> 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 um, so I was saying this one I kind of want to keep in the back, but I like that this is going over. Um, so what I'm um, trying to do here. I'm just gonna make the um, image box actually much smaller so I'm just going to keep this part. It's going on top. Ooh. It's very quick, cheap trick. I was gonna um, say, what is the <laughs> workflow for this? Cool. <laughs> um, and then I see that um, here I kind of have an overlap so I'm just gonna go in and see like how this looks like I feel like this is too busy but maybe on the A it might be nice oh yeah to have this so it's very lyrical this is nice and um, I also see that there is an overlap here that could be nice to have in the front mm -hmm. so I'm just adding that too that's kind of it for the top part. Um, just gonna continue on the bottom. The word plants. I 
I'm like still trying to wrap my mind around what you're doing here with this image frame. Is it the image frame of the illustration? Yeah, so what I did, um, actually I can sh maybe just like show you if I put everything in different layers. Mm -hmm. So um, this one, this is my background, let's say illustration and color. Mm -hmm. And then I have this layer, which is going to be, oh, maybe I'll, I'll add another layer to this. Um, so all these, like, I'm gonna lock the background. Mm -hmm. Select this. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's too difficult. <laughs> no. Um, okay, wait. I'm gonna take these and just place them on a different layer. Okay, now. Um, you see all these like little boxes are mm -hmm. what I had as my front illustrations. Right. So I'm gonna move them. So if I, uh, and then I have the text on layer two. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should also move the red background to the back so we actually see something. Um, Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, I think I see what you did now. Okay, okay so um, this is locked. Um, the only thing that I, why? Oh, <laughs> I forgot to move it. Okay, one second. It's like always when you try to show something. Of course, but you are happens. building like an instructional file so. on the fly. Don't blame you. <laughs> So um, what I did is I took this background illustration mm -hmm. that I have, just like copied it and pasted it in on the same spot. Right. So just above it. Yeah, just above, like on the on this layer, mm -hmm. above the text. So what I did, like if I would just like make this text box bigger again, like you yeah. would see the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. I'm just like adding like tiny um, fragments mm -hmm. of the actual illustration on top of the type. Um, so we have get this like nice overlapping effect. Thank you for explaining that. <laughs> Very simple, super awesome. Um, yeah, so let's, co let's continue playing with this. Um, I'm just gonna call this illustration top. Maybe I'm also gonna put my images later in here. Oh, cool. I have some photography that I'm going to play with too. Ooh, for the cover also? Um, no, not for the cover. Okay. Um, for some other spreads later on. Um, so we were here. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of like that this is going behind it. I, I think it would be nice if there was something that goes over that serif of the T. Maybe this is kind of nice too that it like wraps around like yeah, this. Yeah, it does look like vines. Yeah, and then it's nice that like it really like wraps around the bottom. It's in the back. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just gonna continue with the other letters and see. Um, here I have like two um, lines coming together and. Right. It's Bit bothering me, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this text, uh, this image box, I'm gonna drag it a little bit, I'm gonna add, um, just change the outline. Oh, cool. tiny it's like bit. the direct selection yeah. tool. Um, I love this, you're just kind of putting little windows <laughs> yeah. through to the <laughs> illustration. Uh, yeah, I feel like this is this, this looking really good. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And Kyle's saying, so you're just copy and pasting in place for each new illustration overlap section. Yes, exactly. Genius. And then from there, instead of like moving it around, I'm just like really just taking the um, out, outer shape of the text box and um, changing the sizes to move it. Because mm -hmm. if I would just like drag it, it would change the positioning of the. Yeah, that's true. You're moving the whole frame that way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, um, I think we can actually start um, maybe with some of the spreads. I was thinking I'm just going to quickly lay out the colors, color backgrounds for all of them. Um, mm 
Ooh. What what shortcut are you doing? Paste in place? Ah, uh, yeah. Nice. You're just like, boom, Yes, boom, yes, yes. Boom. Quick, quick, quick. <laughs> I think that's one of the most satisfying things you can do I in these it. products. Um, Even when you're making new pages in the, the um, panel, like over mm. here, you're just like, click, 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 yes. click. <laughs> it's like boom, 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 and yeah. then it's done. You're like, it's so powerful. <laughs> Um, so as I said before, the first spread I want to keep that same color so the co um, cover doesn't get like any weird like color washes mm -hmm. um, through the printing. Um, for one and two, so for two, I was thinking maybe something, uh, the light blue could be nice. Oh yeah. Uh, and then going over into, I think pink. I love that. Um, so and powdery. Then Maybe yellow, and then lilac, and oh, move this. Um, and then the end two spreads I actually want to keep white. Oh. Um, because I'm going to color the illustrations themselves and don't have them white on color, but actually color on colored. White. Yeah. Gotcha. Very nice. Joel says I've been using InDesign for 17 years. Old. <laughs> That's what he says. <laughs> you're not old, you're just a master, Joel. That's amazing. Elwood says, 16 years. Wow. How long have you been using InDesign? Oh, I can't remember. I think... Since you were born. No, 2012, <laughs> I guess. Okay. I used Photoshop much longer. Mm. That's actually how I started out in design. Like, really? When I was, I can't even remember how old I was. I was pretty young. My dad got Photoshop Elements. Yes, that was my <laughs> first Photoshop as well. Yeah, so what he did was like retouching all those like family photos and stuff. He would mm -hmm. take like a ton of pictures. So I got really interested in that. Mm -hmm. So I would sneak up the computer and then just like take images and do funny stuff like paint a mustache on my dad's face yeah. or like add some more makeup to my mom's face <laughs> or I don't know like photoshop like um, different animals into family pictures and stuff yeah. like all sorts of things or adding flowers so that's how I started out actually my first couple um, layouts that I did I did in photoshop because I did not know that vector was a thing yeah. and that InDesign and Illustrator existed. I only learned that when I started studying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's, yeah. yeah. When I first heard the word vector, I was like, is that a weapon of some sort? <laughs> what is that? I feel like I did not understand the concept of it mm -mm. in the beginning because I was so used to working with pixels and Photoshop. Like, yep. I even, like, I designed posters in this. I designed, like, um, event invitations mm -hmm. and sent that to printers, and they were all like, what kind of weird PDF file is this? Yeah. And I'm like, it's a Photoshop file, and they're like, what? Why? <laughs> <laughs> because it was really heavy, too, because yeah, um, Photoshop um, PDFs tend to be really big. And mm -hmm. yeah, I yeah, I designed my first <laughs> T-shirt in high school, and they're like, can you give this to me in an EPS file? And I'm like... What is that? Is that like a PDF? <laughs> They're like, what about an SVG? And I was like, I don't even know. <laughs> mm, I used some like weird pirated like file converter on the internet. So I was like, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> it turned out very strange. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, chat, let us know what your first designs were yeah. or how you got started. I'm, I'm really curious. <laughs> Seriously. Joel says first design I ever made was an Illustrator 88. Wow. Wow. For, my mom had the software. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sneaking on the computer just like Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now I'm no designer. Crazy. <laughs> That's how it goes. You gotta be a little sneaky in the beginning. Yeah. Um, so what I was thinking of doing next is um, I'm not gonna need a lot of um, paragraph styles. I actually just have one in mind that I'm going to use throughout, which is um, headlines. Cool. Um, I was thinking of playing with really big headlines. Um, I'm gonna use the same typeface that I'm using for the cover and make it pretty big. Yeah, left the line is fine. That's all okay. So, um, actually going to jump into this real quick. 
Um, no, that's the wrong one. Uh, <laughs> uh, copy. So I was mm. thinking, I have a ton of copy in here. Whoa. <laughs> okay, let's make it a bit bigger. Mm, no, too big. <laughs> what is this copy from? Um, so it's all over the place. Like this one is a quote, and I found this one as well. I kind of like Rainer Maria Rilke a lot as a poet. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just like um, this. And then I have a, one story that where I'm actually going to use my grid finally. Um, <laughs> finally. <laughs> <laughs> where I'm going to lay out this um, story. It's um, The Frog Prince by mm -hmm. the Brothers Grimm, um, which is pretty long. And then I have another section, which we're going to work on, I think, tomorrow. Um, which is about fruits and vegetables. <laughs> about <laughs> those jokes. Yes, those are <laughs> jokes. They're not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Says who? <laughs> I I kind of love them. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of like that not funny funny humor. Yeah, so silly, <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do then is um, showing some images of um, rotten and oh. like wrinkly. Um, fruit and vegetables. I hope it's not too disgusting. You have to put like a trigger <laughs> warning. And then juxtaposing it a little bit with um, these like funny jokes. So um, <laughs> <laughs> um, for today, um, I actually just want to grab this quote for the first chapter. And what was this poet's name? Um, Rainer Maria Rilke. Um, he is, I don't know, I think kind of a little bit Austrian slash. Just a little bit. Yeah, well, <laughs> he he lived like a, a while ago, so back mm -hmm. then the borders were like yeah. different. Yeah. Um, but um, his um, language in which he actually writes is um, German, mm -hmm. um, So, but I have like an English translation of, um, of this here. Cool. Um, so we're gonna go back. Tim says, a little bit Austrian. Okay, <laughs> maybe Australian, who knows? <laughs> Whoa, I love that already. Yeah. Look at that. Um, so, this one's gonna be a bit, I don't know, it's gonna go over to the second page. Mm -hmm. And um, what I'm also going to do, okay, first of all, I'm going to, um, move this up further i want to cut the type off a little bit and also on the side so how i'm usually doing this is um i just add let me just check on which layer i'm on should be on the type actually um wow you can move things that easily to different yeah. layers that's so cool um i'm going to make another box on top of this, um, I'm gonna cut the oh. type and then paste it into it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna remove the colors on this. Nice, it's almost like a little mask. Yeah. So I'm just, um, actually, if I select this, I can still move around the text box a little bit. Uh, I just wanna make sure the E is like actually aligning here mm -hmm. um, and then I want to cut off the top serifs. See you later serifs. Yeah. Alexandra says I'm learning a bunch of tiny tricks from you that will help <laughs> me work faster. That's great. Yeah. Um, I see that here I have like the serifs kind of touching uh -huh. but not really like um, so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna just change my oh, <laughs> no, never well. mind. I should actually make this all caps. Okay. Yes, much better. Okay, I'm going to change the letting a little bit so it's actually touching. I know it's not going to work everywhere, mm -hmm. um, but that's fine. I just felt like that these were kind of very obvious. Um, and since our fonts are like usually a bit wonkier, it won't be perfect, but yeah. that's okay. Right. Um, so I'm just going to look at how this looks like ragging wise. I feel like I should be 
a bit more. Maybe I'll add like another line here. So when you say ragging, is that like the right edge? How yeah, it's... it's like the edge, like how it looks like. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, maybe I'll just move things around a little bit or maybe I'll extend it a tiny bit. So you know, maybe I could fit more words into this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh. And then I might just like go in feel like this is not going to be resolved. <laughs> Dang it. It can't um, be fixed. I am no. sorry. Uh, I feel like the... Yes, okay. Much better. <laughs> Don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then on the next one, so this is the same t um, because I actually pasted this into a clipping mask. My continuous text box is not going to continue. Mm. So this is actually the copy of the first slide I oh, see. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. Um, since I hope this copy won't change. <laughs> Please. Um, so thinking of me doing this. It's not perfect, but I'm gonna <laughs> add in some illustrations to this, so it's gonna be a bit more loose anyway. Right. That just um, that quote is incredible. There would be an unbelievable shrieking into the heart of the night. What? Sounds like the end of the world. <laughs> just like imagine like how loud it would be. I don't want to. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> um. around probably a little bit. Um, what I can also do just to make sure that these are actually aligned on both pages, mm -hmm. I just copied um, the copy from the other page. I'm gonna add this on top. Um, color this maybe oh. in a different color. Oh. And then lock Ooh. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not letting me, okay. And then I can see if this actually aligns top and bottom and stuff, so, yeah, I think that's okay. And then I can just like delete that again. Hmm. I might actually play around a bit with um, a kerning so I can like delete um, this little guy right. here because that was a bit um, not so nice. Right. I love to see your problem solving. Yeah. Like you know <laughs> how to fix it, but there's probably yeah. a million different ways to do it. There is. There and is. And this is also like, well, I'm, I'm just gonna leave it right now. Um, what I would do if I'm like actually working on a magazine that I might have printed, mm -hmm. I would um, probably outline the text in the very end when I'm done with the design and I know that nothing is going to change anymore. And then I might just like fix these kind of things manually. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nice. Oh, look at those oh, colors. Yes. <laughs> that was nice. A little sneak peek. Um, I'm going to add just like quote attribution here in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And what was the poet's name again? Um, Raina Maria Rica. I just like hearing you say it. <laughs> <laughs> it's my little trick. <laughs> um, See you later, Anita. Thank you so much for being here with us. Appreciate it. And yes, Tim, the studio was a little busy there for a second. We had our next guest, Lucas, come in. Everyone was <laughs> saying hello. And he will be live with Michael Jarrett in about an hour. So stick around. I'm gonna Between. use Futura again. Of course, of course. Um, but I'm gonna mix this a little bit up. Mm -hmm. Um. Ooh, nice and crunched. Yes, I'm gonna think, I, I'm thinking about like making this have like a, I don't know, would call it maybe 90s love song um, album cover uh -huh. feel. Um, let me see where that M dash is. Is that this one or this one? This one, okay. I'm gonna have 
the first letters. Yes. The initials. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. Um, might make this a little bigger. Show the world the amazing love song cover. <laughs> put it further up. I also just see that. Is this aligned? Yeah, I think so. Okay. That reminds me of something and I can't put my finger on it. Maybe it is 90s yeah, love song yeah. cover, <laughs> album covers. <laughs> Next, I was thinking of uh, um, adding illustrations into this. Mm -hmm. So um, I have these um, white ones that I have colored white and knocked out. Um, these here, oh sorry. Um, this one I already have on the cover. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put in mm -hmm. this one. Let me just mark those green so I know which ones. Um, also this tulip um, and then like some tulip petals. Oh, I was going to say, are those beans? No, no beans. Petals? I don't know what this was. Some kind of flower. Looks like a, like a broom or something. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> um, I'm just going to drop them in. Um, I'm going to spread them out over the two pages, but I'm just going to put them in right now so we can see them. Nice. Um, I love how they're all pointing downwards. Okay, <laughs> um, so I think I'm going to use this one on the second page. And then the petals um, on the first one and this one also on the second. Very cool. Israel wants to know what kind of Mac or computer do you use since you do run multiple programs? Um, I just have the um, MacBook Pro 13 inch from, mm -hmm. I don't know, can't remember four or five years ago. Yeah, <laughs> that's just fine. It's not new, um, but, but it's, it's running not, fine. Yeah, yeah, it's not being loud. The fan's yeah. not running. I have like, I updated the OS a couple times and it's mm -hmm. working fine. So Very cool. Pretty happy with it. I still have my MacBook from 2011, <laughs> and I just like upgraded the memory, just totally changed the hard drive, and it's brand new. It's good to go. But it is very heavy. And yeah, Lauren, great question. I know someone already answered it for you, but we do have 20 minutes until the submissions are due. You can see below us there is a timer. And if you're just tuning in, we're challenging you to create a recipe card in InDesign, which is what Stephanie's working in. Uh, you can use or should use an image from the stock gallery. You can just download a preview, uh, throw that in your design, and get those submitted in the next 20 minutes. And if you're still working by the time the deadline hits, just submit it for the next segment with Michael and Lucas. The challenge winner will win a free year of Creative Cloud. It's super cool. It's amazing. I should participate in this. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I know it's a really good prize. Um, so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to do the same spiel as on the cover, mm -hmm. um, probably, um, where I have like front and back yeah. illustration since I already set up all my nice layers. <laughs> At my request. <laughs> Like, why not? Um, I'm gonna start with the tulip petals, I think. Oh, should lock the type. And then insert this on this layer. And then I'm gonna just lock the background illustration so I don't accidentally like touch that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna just start at the bottom and go from there. 
see how it goes. Yeah, my goal totally change your hard drive to a single state drive and it makes things run like butter. Agreed. Cool. With the pedal, I guess it's interesting because it's like a pedal is just a flat piece of fabric so it's interesting to think that it could go behind and in front mm -hmm. it's almost like it's transparent yeah. it's kind of nice thinking about it that way um yeah it's like a ghost <laughs> pedal <laughs> mm. joel says if you can afford it do you mean changing your hard drive to a single state drive I think it's cheaper than buying a new computer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that I know what magic you're working here, I'm like, yes, totally get it. <laughs> I feel so powerful. Um, yeah, I'm not sure like how to do this. I'm thinking that mm. I'm just gonna like stick to that area on the end, right. but then I might move this over here. Oh. Actually, not this way. <laughs> not that one. No, not that way. You just so. did the thing. I just did what I I was telling you not to do. <laughs> okay. Um, continuing down here. It's a bit of a, it's a bit tedious work, but I kind of enjoy doing that. Mm -hmm. It's a little meditative. I feel like it, I don't know why, but to me it feels like playing Tetris. Uh-huh. Anyway, totally. Just like moving blocks around and stuff. Yeah, and they have to work together and you can't have yeah. too many overlapping in the same way. And chat, this is a great time to ask questions. If you have any about Stephanie, her past, her experience as a designer, uh, tips and tricks on getting started in the industry, what have you, feel free to ask them. Because you've had a lot of different experiences, I feel like. Um, well, I had like two jobs in New York mm -hmm. so far, and before that, like a couple internships in Austria and a little bit of freelance work. So it's all very different, I feel like. Yeah. Um, also, I feel like the size of the company that you're working at matters a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And like what your responsibilities are, like, um, and also how much new stuff you learn and yeah. Yeah, so do you feel like for a smaller company you have more responsibility and you might learn more? Um, yeah, I feel like you definitely um, have more responsibility, but I feel like if you have more colleagues, like other designers to work with, mm -hmm. like as it is in a bit bigger companies, I feel like you learn way, way more. Because uh, yeah. it's in, in smaller companies, you get to do a lot of different things and you learn by doing. But I feel like... Um, in uh, bigger companies, you learn more peer to peer, yeah, and just like learn from their experiences, um, hear their stories, and I feel like that's also very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. There's definitely pros and cons to both. Uh, Amber wants to know what is your advice about entering the graphic design world after graduating college? Do you think um, there's a right way to do it? I would just like how I did it, for example, was that I just like emailed, I think, 40 studios around the world. Mm -hmm. I had this like humongous list <laughs> of like places that I want to do internships at mm -hmm. um, because I felt like if I just do another internship, like I did a couple during school, but it was like all very like local. Um, agencies in Austria and the city that I lived and it was pretty short like one or two months mm -hmm. um, one of them I did for three months and I felt like I wanted to do something a bit more long term mm -hmm. just to also see how people's processes are because I feel like in one or two months you don't learn that much like yeah. you see a lot of different things but you don't really learn a process of like how for example a branding um, process is from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, what I did was just like applied at a bunch of places um, abroad because uh, for me it was um, ex important to just like see how processes are um, in other countries yeah. and also when you work in a different language, like how does that work? Yeah. Um, so Brave. for me, I felt like 
the most important thing after graduation was just to get a lot of experience, like practical experience and not just like what you learned in school because yeah. I feel like that is very different. It's very different. Uh, going off of that, Alexandria wants to know what is your favorite job that you've had and what skill sets helped you get that job? Hmm. It's a good question. I really love the job I have right now. Yeah. Good <laughs> yeah. answer. <laughs> <laughs> Just because um, we're tapping into a lot of different um, areas of design. Mm -hmm. um, like I've worked on an exhibition for like a really, really big um, museum in the US with an amazing team. And I feel like it's really great to have like all these other talented designers surrounding me yeah. that I'm like collaborating with on a daily basis, not just like on one project, but on multiple projects. It spans from like tiny branding projects for um, some small, um, kind of you could call it maybe startup, um, and then to like really big companies that yeah. are established, like um, international companies where you're just like helping them with I don't know, logo refreshes or yeah. something. Or also like websites, like online magazines, printed magazines, books. It's like a really everything. wide range. Yeah, which is kind of how you went to school too. You yeah. kind of learned everything. So it's yeah. maybe where you feel comfortable. Yeah, it's yeah. exciting. Cool, so being um, diverse and having a lot of different skills helped you get what you wanted <laughs> to do now. <laughs> All right, someone's playing the drums. Yeah, they're saying, get to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gus is just shaking his head. And we're looking at my computer, not yours. There we go. <laughs> I know. The marching band is coming to take oh, us yes. away. Oh no. <laughs> Men at work. <laughs> yeah. Cool, so you're playing your game of Tetris right now. Yes, I am. <laughs> That is funny. Anna says, hits Kush. There's a guy that works at Adobe named Kush, and he has a drum set in his office. But I've never heard him playing it, so I don't think that's him. Ooh, that's a good question, Mr. Director. How do you deal with uh, negativity at work? Like when things get stressful, or specific colleagues that might not deal with stress well? I feel like in that kind of situation you always should be really respectful of everybody around you and also if you have certain problems with a, one person or in a project you should always talk to them mm -hmm. or talk to your project manager and be like this is really stressing me out like can we find a solution to this like is there anything we can do like for example if the timeline is really really tight and there's so much pressure on you and you're like I have five other projects that I have to work on, yeah. is there any way we can push back the deadline a little bit with the client? And mm -hmm. usually, like if you work in an environment where everybody's like really nice, like you, you would be like, oh yeah, of course, like we can work this out together. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's always a dialogue. Yes. It's like don't just like keep that negativity to yourself mm -hmm. and just be sad about it. Yeah, you need to it talk faster. to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think uh, <laughs> it's always important to like when you do have an issue. Come, go to the person or the the project manager like with a solution already in mind. Yeah. Just so you don't seem like you're just coming to complain. It's like, no, I actually want this to be fixed. Yeah, like always go in with like a positive attitude and say like, I want this to be better. Like mm -hmm. I want to find a solution and not just like everything's shit. Like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, that's not a good attitude to have for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Joel, HR departments are important, especially if you work in bigger companies. <laughs> Nice, so we have about 10 minutes until we're gonna be looking, well, maybe like 15 minutes until we're gonna be looking at the challenge entries, but uh, 10 minutes and 39 seconds until the challenge entry deadline hits. So after that point, if you submit, it'll be shown in the next segment with Lucas and Michael. Uh, so make sure that you get those projects in in the next 10 minutes, we'd love to see them. We'll be looking through them and giving a little bit of feedback pros and cons, just trying to help you really strengthen your editorial design skills and celebrate your successes. And the winner will win a free year of Creative Cloud and get your work featured live in front of all your creative friends. Very I'm pretty so excited. <laughs> yes, I've been yeah, peeking I at see them. them all. <laughs> I've been naughty and looked at them. They're very cool. 
Yes, Tim. Beep boop, 10 minutes left. Thank you for the announcement. <laughs> Brett, that's a good point. It's hard to produce good work when you're not having fun. Yeah, it's important to uh, enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. You're not always gonna like it. No. Not every single part of the process. No, there's always ups and downs. Also, um, projects that might seem like it's a dream project. Mm -hmm. um, it might not be at certain points. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's like very stressful. Um, everybody's on edge, but then there's always like a reward afterwards. Yes, the payoff yeah. is real, definitely. I always find it like most rewarding. For example, if you work on a branding, and then you see it out in the wild, mm -hmm. or you work on a book and you go into a bookshop and um, you just see it on the shelf and yeah. you're like, oh, I designed this. Totally cool. I used to design t-shirts and when I, my first shirt was actually in the store and like I could go in and buy it or oh, tell people to fun. go in and buy it. And I was like, it's fun. So cool and I can keep it forever. <laughs> <laughs> There's something very tactile about that. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Director wants to know, how do you balance that work that you really love and the work that you... Oh, wait, no, that's not what he's asking. <laughs> he's asking about paid work and unpaid work. Do you ever do pro bono projects, and if so, what kind? Um, I currently don't freelance myself, mm -hmm. so um, I don't think that we do a lot of pro bono work mm -hmm. at our studio, um, but I guess it's always like a case by case basis. Yeah. I feel like if I was uh, freelancing, um, I would be thinking about is this a project that is really, really close to my heart? Like, is it some sort of issue that I feel like is worth fighting for? Yeah. And like having stand out nicely graphically so people understand it and support it then I would say it's like not a problem to either do pro bono or like offer a reduced rate. Yeah, right. Um, if you really, really want to work on it and if you know that this organization or whatever is doesn't have the means to yeah. um, pay a designer. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, if you know it's like a huge, like, I don't know, international corporation or whatever that has the money, like, then I wouldn't on. do it. Yeah. yeah. Then I'd be like, well, mm. <laughs> Yeah. You're just yeah. trying to get spec work. It's not so yeah. good. No, spec work's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's actually a conversation about that. Like, some people think in some situations it's good. Mm. Um, I, I think th as a designer, it's hard to ever yeah. see that situation as good. Yeah. Also, it's like, it really depends on like what other projects you have right now and if you can afford financially to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I do what's good for you. Totally. Yeah. And <laughs> chat, you are sharing some really cool stuff. Anna says, when I made my first book and held it, held the work that I designed in my hands, small tears. Oh. Yeah. Such a payoff. It's, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But also, the moment where you, I feel like I have that especially with books or anything that is printed. The first time you hold it in your hands, you always see a mistake. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, no one else sees this? Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Man. Like, even if you, like, have an editor look at it or, like, uh, I don't know, five people proofread it, mm -hmm. there might always be, like, a tiny thing that's off. Man, have you ever noticed something really big that was a mistake? Um, no, nothing Good. like super huge. Yeah. <laughs> Man. <laughs> she says, that's so true, you always see a mistake. <laughs> yeah, Tim, a great point. Check out Stephanie's work. We've got her website, Behance, Twitter. Lots of good places oh, to check thank out. thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's always good for the social media push. <laughs> Make sure to definitely follow on Behance. Lots of really cool projects. Her website is beautiful, designed by hers truly. <laughs> <laughs> that good, good Twitter life. Oh, thank you, Adobe Live. You can also look at my Instagram if you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's there, it exists. <laughs> Ooh, Alexis, that's a good point. Make sure to print out your drafts so you can save yourself from the final draft oh, yeah. embarrassment of having mistakes. Yeah, I feel like definitely for if you create logos, for example, then I would like print them out in like huge sizes, small mm -hmm. sizes, so you just know if um, it's legible even, like right. when it's printed small and 
also to see like if you work on the kerning, like it looks so different when yeah. it's big, like compared Optics. to when it's small. And then also if you work on, I like when I work on books or anything that has a lot of text to print it out and just like look at the layout and then also the ragging that we looked at before, mm -hmm. like just make sure that it really looks good. And I sometimes like to go in and just take a pencil and just like mark little things. Yeah. Because I feel like if you just look at it on the screen, it's so different. But if it's something that is actually made to be printed, I feel like you should look at it on paper. Oh yeah, for sure. Very important. And seeing it like zoomed out, looking mm -hmm. at it from far away, from up close. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> People in chat are being silly. Tim, you don't have an Instagram. What are you talking about? <laughs> Who should vote? Who votes that Tim gets an Instagram? Me. Raise my hand. Me Why not? <laughs> They're awesome. <laughs> Paco says me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are going to be doing portfolio reviews on Thursday in place of the challenge. So instead of seeing a challenge submission deadline below us, you'll see a portfolio review deadline. Uh, it'll be pretty much the same thing, except you'll be submitting your portfolio for us to critique and review and share your work. We'll pick a couple every segment, and there will be three segments, so you get a good chance of being chosen. It's a really great opportunity. And it makes me convicted because I haven't updated my portfolio in a while. So I'm like, I'm gonna <laughs> update so I can give these reviews and not feel bad about it. But sometimes it just like takes time until you have accumulated like more work that you're proud to be exactly. showing. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like there is nothing wrong with not updating your portfolio for a bit if you're like actually working hard and mm -hmm. wanting to make sure that everything that's on there is actually good. Yeah. Right. That's the point of a portfolio. Yeah. You don't want to just fill it up with. I haven't stuff. updated mine in years, and then I put two projects up this year because I was Yay! like, well, I should should actually. <laughs> add some new stuff yeah it's hard too if you're yeah. working full-time like yeah. you it takes a lot of time to do mm -hmm. and if you're working full-time then there's almost like I don't really need to update my portfolio at the moment I'm kind of have my hands full over here yeah true <clears throat> yeah mr. director we're gonna be looking at uh, recipe cards in two and a half minutes well actually more like seven minutes the deadline will hit We'll get them all open, ready for viewing, and then we'll do some nice critiquing. <laughs> Brett says NDAs suck. Yeah, that could also keep your portfolio from being robust because all your projects could be secret. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you I don't know what an NDA is, it's a non-disclosure agreement. So companies can be like, hey, you can't talk about this for two years or until after this film is released, which might be like five years down the line. Kind of crazy. Yay, Margarita, you submitted, that's awesome. Liani, you missed us talking about agency work, how to solve workplace conflicts. Uh, what else do we talk about? Portfolios. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, the normal design stuff. Alexandra says, I work at a media company and we have NDAs all the time. But that's frustrating. Yeah. But it's understandable if it's like a project that is launching in two years, but you, you've you done the work now, of course you shouldn't be talking about it mm -hmm. because like depending on what kind of company um, the client is, like it might be actually a really big financial problem mm -hmm. if th things get leaked and stuff. Oh so. yeah. Totally, totally makes sense, but it is frustrating. And then you think two years down the line, will I even want to share this in my portfolio? <laughs> Your skills could be so different. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but Liani, I know you missed some questions, but if you have some, feel free to ask. We're here for about another 25 minutes-ish. We've got Lucas and Michael coming up next, who will also be able to answer your design questions. <laughs> yeah, Brett, non-compete agreements are also frustrating at times. Yay, 30 seconds, 10 seconds, 9, 8, Ooh. 7, <laughs> 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The deadline has almost passed. 2, 1. So, if you have not submitted your work 
yet. Keep working. We'll get those uploaded and looked at in the next segment. But in about five minutes, we will look at your submissions, go through our whole critiquing goodness, and wrap up the segment. It's gone by so quickly. <laughs> go, Steph, go, says Grace Hi, Kim. Yeah, it's like so, so much tiny stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Steph is the best. <laughs> A friend, perhaps. Who is that? Oh, Grace, hi. <laughs> What's up, Grace? Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. I love it when friends come in. Yeah. I didn't know she had a beans. <laughs> Probably made it just for you. <laughs> Alexandra, put your mouses down, as my professors used to say. Oh. I mean, you can keep working. <laughs> Everyone else. Yeah, I'm gonna get these submissions open. Oh my gosh, oh, yeah. Stephanie, we have so many. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. We're gonna have to go through a ridiculous all. We shall, we shall. We even have some previous winners who submitted. Walter, I believe, has won before. Perhaps? Maybe not. Either way, some awesome designers. Grace says, I signed up just for oh, you, dear. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> so sweet. Thanks, Grace. <laughs> Welcome to Adobe Live. Yeah. We're here every week with a different theme. This week happens to be editorial design. Last week was XD, I think. It all becomes a blur every week. Ooh, Walter, you submitted a new one. Awesome. Slowly clicking through. Lots of summery drinks and summery foods. Mm. Gonna make me real hungry. Oh, me too. It's <laughs> almost lunchtime. <laughs> it is lunchtime. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> My gosh, seriously, pina colada, sangria. Ooh, party time. Infused water, or as I like to call it, spa water. Then after we do our critique, we will go over what Stephanie's worked on today, what she'll be working on tomorrow. Showing the whole process, a little quick overview. And we'll say goodbye for about five minutes and then welcome our next people on. Uh, do you wanna start looking at these? Sure. All right, we'll look through them all. Ooh, brunch and crunch. Brunch and crunch. Banana and brie savory muffin. This looks like it has a couple mm. different pages. Ooh, I like the uh, like hexagonal oh, yeah. size. Yeah, I like the ingredient images. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ingredients. <laughs> Prepare it. I feel like that's like playing on my stupid uh, yeah. <laughs> jokes. I love that. <laughs> bon appetit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very simple, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's nice. It's um, It has a good overview, walks you through the ingredients first, and then mm -hmm. how to prepare it. It's yeah. like um, very practical, I guess, if you like work on it. Yeah, very nice. Great job. And the nice yellow kind of bread color. Yeah. Whoa. Ooh, oh Classic my God. lamb shakes. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> nice use of a preview image. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Is this Futura? I think Perhaps. so. Yeah. <laughs> nice using that yeah. as a secondary text. <laughs> So let's see, this is kind of like the cover, giving mm -hmm. you a little overview and then actually how yeah. to do it. Let's see what the hints and tips <laughs> is. Shirt serve on a base of heated, then roughly mashed canned spar, barlotti, or cannellini beans, and a spicy tomato relish. <laughs> Love that. Got it. So what do you think that they could um, do to make this even better? Mm, I feel like, for example, on the introductory text, I would maybe um, play a bit more on the bragging. Mm. I feel like since it, it's creating like a very sharp shape, yeah. and I feel like the goal would be to actually have it a more confined text mm -hmm. box. Right. Um, so what I would do is maybe move the until the or just the, the down mm -hmm. and see how that works. Yeah. Um, overall, I feel like it looks very um, clean, like simple. Um, I like the layout. It's it's a nice overview of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Classic. I mm. think classic is a good way to describe it. Cool. Great job. 
Ooh, mm. ice cream. Fruity uh, Neapolitan lolly, lo lolly loaf. Yum. It's like a little popsicle loaf. Oh yeah, I like that like hand-drawn kind mm -hmm. of style. Check that out. Very nice, okay. Then it has a nice layout down here. What do you think of this icon design? Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. I also, yeah, I, I like that there are like distinct boxes that call things out. Like mm -hmm. for example, the top box that says calories and all yeah. that. Um, all the nutritional information is interesting. Mm -hmm. And then also I feel like the icons are really great. Like it shows you with one glance, like what this is about, like yeah. how much, like how long it takes and all that. So yeah, that's great. Really nice job. And it looks delicious. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh that's nice. Yeah. Goodness. <laughs> um, <laughs> strawberry yogurt bar. Mm. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> yeah, look how minimalist this is. This and is fresh. really nice. Yeah, I like the layout, like playing with it a bit loosely, but mm -hmm. with some sort of grid. I love that. I also like the colors and the type a lot. Yeah, I like this little use of the mm. bold. Uh, not totally introducing a new typeface, but just wow. <laughs> thunderstorm <laughs> in San Francisco. <laughs> See you later, Mr. Director. Thanks for being here. Yeah, and I love just this little oh, yeah. peachy. Yeah, I like that the colors correspond to the image. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. Very millennial pink. <laughs> nice job. Ooh, Ooh, nice. And they're doing kind of like the overlapping. Oh yeah, I love that. The micro greens. So <laughs> for the lunch, mango shrimp salad. I think this is a nice integration of yeah. just like stock imagery with yeah. other stock imagery. I think it's like, um, it makes it really interesting visually, mm -hmm. playing with like different layers of imagery and type. Um, I love how the ingredients are like scattered. It's nice. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, clean, airy even. Cool, good job. Ooh, illustrated. Nice. Rhubarb put it, puttage, <laughs> porridge. <laughs> All right, I wonder if these are hand drawn. Yeah, it's like cool. I it's like the overlapping colored shapes. Mm hmm. Yeah, kind of off register. Mm. So I'm guessing this is someone European. So it's talking about things in euros. Mm -hmm. so who is it in chat? Let us know. <laughs> Lots of different illustrations used for this. Yeah, I love those. Mm -hmm. And I love, I love how clear some of these are, but mm. some of them are a little confusing to me. Like this could be any, yeah. maybe it's basil, maybe it's yeah, sage. Some, some herb. Mm -hmm. I would um, add like actually the names of what it is mm -hmm. um, next to or like on top of um, the amount. Yeah. Um, just so it's a bit more clear yeah. um, what this is about. Um, I, I like the color schemes a lot. Like I like how every single um, recipe card has its own yeah. nice color scheme. They really, I really like this one. They melt together well. This little pop of kind of purpley bluish with this <laughs> red is nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. Cool, great job. And a pinch of brown stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Could be anything. These are really nice walnuts though. Yeah. Cool, great job. Ooh, Ooh. delicious drink. Brazilian. Nice watercolor illustration. Yeah, so did you do this illustration or is it maybe a stock image? These are really nice. Yeah, Check that those out. are really nice. If you drink, don't drive. Nice. I like how the style of the um, headline typeface and fits to all the um, watercolor yeah. illustration. It's really right. nice. Super good. I also like that layout of the ingredients that it's like not just a list, but. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like, like a, a group smattering. Of, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then very simple instructions. That's mm. helpful because the recipe is simple, but yeah. just keeping things really clear and concise. Seems like a very laid back yeah. drink. <laughs> Yum. Yeah, Alexandra, this is refreshing. <laughs> Agreed. Ooh, Ooh, summer recipe. Nice vector illustrations from stock. Oh, Fruity. That looks so good. For oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, mango salad. It's almost like a mango salsa. Mm. What do you think about this introduction of like um, an illustrative element that kind of comes into play? Um, I, I like that, but mm -hmm. I feel like might 
I don't know, like play around with it a bit more. I feel like it was not entirely obvious that mm -hmm. there is something on the other side as well. So I would extend okay. it maybe a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and more into that white corner of the illustration uh, of the image. So it's like not too much overlapping over the green and like disappearing. Right. That's yeah. true. Cool. Let's look at the last one. Free summer recipe. So this is maybe just the end of it. Back cover. So very fresh, the whole thing. Mm. I think this is the most successful part. Yeah. Just this cover. I like how it crops into the type as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like in your face, fresh, delicious. Nice. Ooh, Ooh glass of guacamole <laughs> and vegetable chips. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That looks so good. I love guacamole. Yeah, me too. So what do you think about the these color choices mm. with this? I feel like for, I like that the orange pops up from the chips, um, but I feel like that um, like turquoise um, color could mm -hmm. be maybe either a bit more green or more dark blue to like respond, like take something from mm -hmm. the image because I feel like it does clash a little bit with it. Right. So just to make it a bit more cohesive, I would maybe tweak that tone a little bit um, so it feels like more like one unit and not just like text part, image part. Right. But other than that, I think I think it's really cool to play with shapes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice job. Yeah, I like it. All right, Ooh. citrus splash, another delicious <laughs> drink. Yes. All right, we got ingredients, we got mm -hmm. directions, we got the finished product over here. Mm -hmm. I like the use of this, like magenta e that really goes yeah. well with these images. Yeah. Um, I think I, I really like the layout itself. I just feel like maybe for the directions, it will help to break the text up more, maybe into paragraphs, um, just so it's like smaller chunks to digest while you walk yeah. through the um, recipe while you're doing it. Yeah, definitely. And I think maybe there might be a, m this is already a creative solution to this issue of wanting to have white text, but the mm. image is too bright. But having this dark gradient kind of dampens the, the vibrant mm. spirit of this image. So I wonder if there's a different way. Maybe you could play with um, more of a color instead of black. Like mm -hmm. maybe there's like a dark red or orange. Yeah. Like something that feels a bit more summery that yeah. you could play with. Yeah, maybe instead of having it be a multiply layer or darkening it, it could be brightening it with overlay or mm. screen or something. Nice. Aw, oh, a little oh. illustration. <laughs> Creamy garlic shrimp. It's very cute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like the mixture like, of yeah. actual photography with illustration. <laughs> I also like the outline type. Mm. I feel like that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you find it in a couple couple different places. Yeah. <laughs> cool. This is all the important info. We got ingredients, mm. steps, very simple, nutritional facts, very important. Hmm. Anything you would change? Um. I'm, I find it interesting that you have, for example, the ingredients like saying one package of linguine, like mm -hmm. that you have the um, quantity on top. Right. Which I, I don't know, probably because I'm like thinking a bit very traditional, but <laughs> I feel like it irritated me a little bit because mm -hmm. I was wondering, oh, is this still from like the line before? Yep, that's what I was thinking. Um, so either if you want to keep it there, I would highlight it more, like mm -hmm. make it bold or something, or I would just like keep it on the same line. Yeah, definitely. I think so too. It seems like it would work if you mm -hmm. just backed it up yeah. one line. Cool and obviously cute illustration, yeah, a little really cute. note of a bright background or <laughs> bright border, maybe mm -hmm. even making it the border even a bit thicker. Yeah, it yeah. seems maybe almost like an accident, but it's like add a little more oomph. Great. All right, mermaid lemonade. Ooh. Okay, <laughs> celebrate summer. I will, I will. Looks very summery. Oh, cute. Yeah, it's so simple. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Kind of using the off registration mm -hmm. coloring style. Yeah, I also like like the wavy colors on the side. Yeah, good little detail. You can even integrate that further, I feel mm. like. Um, yeah. if you want a more complex design. So this is something similar that the other one did where it has two mm -hmm. cups and then ice. Yeah. Um, might be a little easier to understand here because it says two cups ice yeah. instead of just like two. 
I think size. it's also because in a way this um, has like different um, type hierarchy for every line. So mm -hmm. you see that the ingredient is like all caps, but the quantity is like um, lowercase. Yeah, that's so true. So I feel like this helps breaking it up a little bit, mm -hmm. and then also the um, letting between two ingredients like is a bit separated. Yeah. So it feels more like it's different entities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would love helps. it. Yeah, definitely. If you made a little illustration for your drinks too, I think it would match well with the little illustrations that you have here. Yeah. Nice job, Lisa. All right, summer sangria. Yum. Mm. This is very clear. Yeah, I like here that um, there is like a color overlay over the image, and it's it seems like it's not just black, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, to make it darker, so the white text reads on it. Um, yeah. It's very legible. It's really nice. Um, has a good overview. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think this is a good example of they had to probably darken the image a little bit, like mm -hmm. like in the previous one where they had an almost black gradient. It feels like they just did maybe a, a multiplied like dark purple or mm -hmm. or red over top of this. So it's still saturated, but just a little bit deeper. Yeah. Very cool. Nice job. Nice colors. Oh, um, nice. That sounds so good. Prosecco <laughs> punch. Yes. I like that the colors um, are, are taken from the image, which mm -hmm. is really nice, like the green and the red, yeah. orange. This is like the perfect um, like grapefruit or blood orange color. Mm. Nice. And I yeah. think this is a really clear and successful way of doing the ingredients. Yeah. So simple. Just a little bold title. Mm. Yeah. There you go. I also like the bullets and the instructions. It makes it really clear, like what, where which step ends, mm -hmm. which is nice. Yeah, good job. And we already did brunch and crunch. Maybe this is an updated version. Let's click through real quick. Yeah, these are updated. Yeah, different images. Mm-hmm. I, I think I prefer this. Yeah, it's cute. <laughs> this is much more appetizing to me than that yeah, the mixing bowl yeah, that had everything. True. Very good. I like that little update. Nice. And we got the pina colada. <laughs> cool, a little bit of a history for oh, it. That's nice. Maybe on the yeah. back of the recipe I card. I like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like that it has a bit of a story to it, um, and it's not just like ingredients and instructions, which yeah. is nice. Yeah, right. Cool, anything that you would change to kind of take it to the next level? I mean, maybe um, on, the, on this slide where it's, um, talking about the history, mm -hmm. maybe play a bit more with type, maybe even with type hierarchy, different sizes, maybe yeah. even color mm -hmm. to make it a bit more exciting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right now it just kind of seems like a wall mm. of text, even with this yeah. nice breakage. I like on the first page that there is like more of a type hierarchy and you know what it's about mm -hmm. and it's playing a bit more with color. So I feel like it could bring that in a bit more on the second page too. Yeah. Nice. So I'm going to make sure that we saw every single one. Uh, maybe Gus can confirm if we looked at all of them. Or maybe I can do it myself. No, we missed three. Hmm. So great. Glad I checked. Oh, vegetable skewers. Mm -hmm. It's barbecue season. Heck yeah, it is. <laughs> and I think that's all of them. Okay. So we have a couple more to look at. So we just looked at pina colada. Mm -hmm. We've got Lauren's grapefruit, lemon, sage infused water. Nice. Did yeah. we? I feel like we. Oh, we saw this image. We saw the image. Nice. Yeah. Using the same gallery. Mm. Very cool. I like, I like this typeface. Yeah, I like. I like the um, blue, blue and the pink together. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Yeah. I agree. What do you think about these two typefaces paired together? Mm, I feel like. I would probably choose something a bit less characteristic for the, um, let's say, like the ingredients, like where it says one pink grapefruit sliced, mm -hmm. um, because I feel like the headline with the grapefruit, lemon, and sage infused water um, is already a very um, characteristic um, serif mm -hmm. typeface that has a lot of personality. Yeah. So I feel like it would make it 
take it to the next level um, if you just like choose maybe a very simple sans serif, like something that's a bit more nondescript. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I feel like this has a lot of character to it. Also like tiny serifs to it. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cool. I love this little heart icon. Our editors so love cute. it. <laughs> a little extra thought put into down here. I like the little clock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good icons. Nice job, Lauren. Yeah. Just a couple more. We've got vegetable skewers. Yeah. Cool diagonal design. Yeah. This is very experimental. Yeah, I like it. I like it. playing with the shapes. Mm -hmm. There's outline text yeah. again. Mm -hmm. Like the big try. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like adding like a little like tip or like some advice to it. It's mm -hmm. kind of nice. It's a little yeah. bit of personality. And I love this use of this brown without making it look like meat, like mm. gross kind of. It's, it's a, a nice, nice color. Mm -hmm. Nice summary. Very good. Nice cool. job. This is by <laughs> Joe Cook. Let's see if we have more. Let's see. This looks like maybe barbecue. Corn. And it looks like this is just the cover of the oh, recipe okay. card. Nice. Seems very friendly. Yeah. Easy recipes. Like the summary colors. Mm hmm Cool. And I think that is it. So we only have a couple minutes left, like maybe two or three to pick your mm -hmm. favorite. So I'm going to kind of go through here again. You can let me know which ones really speak to you. A lot of them are so different. Yeah. I think I need to see them all, and then I can pick one. Okay. <laughs> cool. I think if you go back, <laughs> um, this one's kind of nice. Okay. I like the big um, type and the overlapping. Yeah, definitely. Um, this is really cute. This one? Yeah. Um, This one's nice too. Prosecco punch. And then there was this one with the um, Brazilian caipirinha. I think oh, that was yeah. the watercolor, which is really, really nice. I think it's back here. Yeah. All right. Let's I love that. I loved how the type like played together with the illustration. Yeah. Cool. So it looks like we have a top four ish. All very different. Super awesome mixing illustration and design. Any thoughts? On a winner. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's hard really hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love them all. Um, I feel like for me, the most successful felt like the um, Caipirinha one, I think, cool. because it felt like in total, like one entity, mm -hmm. like um, the illustrations, the colors, the yeah. type. I feel like it Good could really f fit together in mm -hmm. like one world. Yeah. Very cool. So I'm not sure who created this. Maybe Adobe Live can let us know, or you can let us know in the chat. But whoever created this delicious Brazilian drink, you're the winner. Congratulations. Yay. <laughs> so if you have not won previously, you are the proud owner of a new year of Creative Cloud. Uh, be sure to look out in your Behance messages for info on that. And we only have, maybe you can wake your oh, yeah, computer sorry. up real quick. Oh. You fell asleep. Oh, it's there. Oh, Adriano, it was you. Congrats. Woo Yay. <laughs> uh, so we only have like two minutes. Maybe super quickly we can go over what you did today and what you're going to do tomorrow. Yeah. So um, today we worked on this scene about um, celebrating the beauty and the ugly named mm -hmm. Dead Plants. Um, we started today with laying out, um, actually creating a grid um, for the cover and then a different grid for the inside pages. And we started with creating a logo type um, for the cover and overlaying that with illustration. And so we played cool. with um, having the illustration wrap around the type. Mm -hmm. And um, then we started playing around with the first two spreads. Um, same spiel, but with just like big quote. And then we also chose a nice color palette. <sighs> Makes me so happy. Yeah. <laughs> Man. And then you left the yeah. last two white because you're going to add colored yes, illustrations. Exactly. Very cool. So we have two more days with Stephanie. We'll be back from uh, 11 to 1 on Wednesday and Thursday. But don't go away because we have Michael Jarrett and Lucas Albrecht coming up next. Lucas, he's in the house. Back there rocking that pink polo. <laughs>
What's up, friend? So he'll be back uh, here in a couple minutes. Make sure you stick around, but get some water. Take a little stretch break. We're going to go eat lunch. Yeah. Because we just looked at all oh, these recipes. Those recipe cards. <laughs> yeah, and so hungry. Chat, thank you so much for being here and supporting <laughs> Stephanie. She did such a great job for her first day. Thank you. And hopefully she'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> Yay. Yay. So thanks, everyone. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. Thank you. See you See tomorrow. You. <laughs> Thank you.